you for joining us during this very special Valentine's Day episode. I know you secretly listen, and you know I don't have time for cues. G-N-K-Z-D-Z-J-O. Is this part of the Green Apron sponsor script or something? I never went... This is an interesting comment in the stream. (sighs) Which one? Tyler Bunny 22 asks, who does the song? The Subsister song? No, he's talking who does our song. And the answer to that, Tyler, is our very own Sonny Tillman. Yeah, I made this one. Oh, God, it's been ten years now? It hasn't been that long since 2008, has it? Do you think we need a new one? I don't know. Do shows change songs? I like this one. Yeah, I was just wondering. Maybe something to do. Well, do you have another song you want to use for the show? We can change a song if you have a new one you're trying to show off. No, I, I don't have anything. Not right now. You know how it is. Mm, I'm not sure I do know how it is. Well, it's hard to hold on to a job where you make your money, a side gig, and your ambitions. <laughs> this show's your mistress, then? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. It just feels like I haven't had much time for music because of Subsister. But I'm really just making excuses for myself. Yeah. I wanted to pitch sitcoms and shows and stuff to producers when I first moved out here to L.A., but I guess you're right. Other stuff gets in the way. You're in your early 20s, and you think you have all the time in the world to figure it out, and you'll create once you get a second. But you look up, and you're 30, and you haven't made anything in years. Well, what about this? You're a successful podcaster, right? No, you're right, and I do love doing this. I don't know. I guess it's hard to realize what you've given up. To move forward, you always have to let something go behind you. I'm just scared of what I've let go. You need to call me back, or I'm getting the police involved. This is getting kind of serious now. Are are you calling her? Yeah, you heard her. She's going to call the police if we don't get this figured out. You know how it sounds when you hear your voice in a recording that you didn't do? I understand Jennifer's panic. Are you still recording? Well, yeah, we're documenting all of this. Are you going to answer that? It's not important. And this is important? This is about looking into these mystery episodes that keep showing up on my drive of our old podcast that ended over five years ago. All based around a canceled reality show, Subsister, culminating in a recording of my death due in a few months. And now, the woman on the original recording we found, Jennifer Whitler, is freaking out, and I have to call her back to try and explain why her voice is on a recording she never did. That? Figure out what she has to do with this. I meant, what are we doing? Why are we still recording? The police might get involved. We have to make an account, in case I do die. In case anyone can hear this that is experiencing the same thing. We have to keep going, because this is real. It's not fake, like everyone keeps saying. Because this is Subsister, a real podcast. Hello? Jennifer Whitler? Who is this? It's Ray Buechler. You called me earlier? Sorry, I was in Eureka and on the drive home is... How do you have recordings of my voice? Who are you? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I know, I don't know how the recording exists. I know who I am. Is this like an art thing? You know, I've just about been asked that every which way you can possibly imagine. And I still don't know. My sister says I should talk to my lawyer first. That's not bad advice. I know I've been talking to mine throughout this. Are you trying to sue me? No, 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 no. I'm just as in the dark as you are. I know we've never met, so I don't know how this is possible, but have you ever had any kind of contact with... I have to get back to work. I'm... A geometry teacher, right? Tenth grade? How did you... It's on the tapes. You should probably talk to your lawyer, just in case... Make sure you feel comfortable about all this. You know what, I, and then after that, maybe call us back. Yeah. Yeah, I'll call you back. Except she never did. Jennifer Whitler died last week. Car accident. 
Feels like it's always a car accident. At least 90 people die a day from auto accidents. There are 331 million people as of this recording in the United States, and Jennifer happened to be one of those 90. What are the odds? It seems suspicious, to say the least, that I finally get in contact with the mysterious woman from the tapes, and she has as little idea as I do about what's going on. Maybe we could have figured it out together, but now... Jennifer's sister, Jessica, former longtime listener, called the police about me. At least I assume it was her, because they paid a visit to my apartment the day after the accident. So I turned on my mic just in case. And that's all you know. Yeah, it's all recorded. I run an investigatory podcast, so I've been recording everything. You want proof where I was that day? I got it. Okay, this is just preliminary stuff. Honestly, we got no signs of foul play. It's all on the level. But you know how it is. Family member has a tip, and we gotta look into it. So it was definitely an accident, Jennifer's death. Yeah. Tragic, but yeah. A driver was weaving through lanes and ended up slamming into her. They both hit a median. I hate stuff like that. It's so random, you know? Yeah, random. You going to answer that? It's... It's just damn robocallers, you know. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Bugler. Did, uh, you need anything else? Uh, I know this probably isn't the time, but me and the wife were big fans. We loved your season. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Feels like a million years ago now. What did you ever end up doing with the million? Uh, you know, I, you, you blow most of it on the new house and the new car, you know? This apartment seems like a downgrade from a house. Don't need as much room when you're alone. I was hesitant to tell the officer any more than that, though. After all, he was the one delivering the news of Jennifer's death. You don't think this is anything more than an accident, do you, Ray? Trisha, look at the timeline. Jennifer dies a week after we finally talk? You don't think that's suspicious? I, I know. I just don't see how they could have done it. The other driver died, too. I don't see someone sacrificing themselves to keep the secrets of subsisters safe. Hey, don't, don't make fun of me. Not right now. I'm not making fun of you. I know how easy it must be to jump into conspiracies right now. I want to believe them, too, but you need to stay grounded. Now, we have to pick up the pace. That's what we need to do. We're running out of time. Whoever plans on killing me on May 13th of the month has already killed Jennifer. Okay, we can't know that for sure. And we don't even know if that's you dying on the tape. It sounds like it, but it could be, um... Me being tortured? You, uh... uh I guess that's possible, too. It sounds way more fun. All right, where are we on things? I'm scheduling a meeting with Kira, but she only wants to meet in person. Well, what's the problem? She shows up out of the blue and asks for an in-person meeting. You think someone assassinated Jennifer Whitler, but this doesn't concern you? At worst, she's a glory hound looking for some attention before another payday. At best, she's got an answer, or at least a similar story. I really think you should talk to Beanie before we move on. Talking to cops? People actually dying? This is getting really scary, Ray. I never thought Jennifer would die because of this. I never meant any of this to happen. Which is what makes getting to the end of this so important. We have to solve it. You know what's satisfying? The crunch of a lobster cracking. Am I at a fancy seafood restaurant? No, I'm just hanging out at home after a long night of working on my podcast. Lobster at home you cry out in the night? Yes, with Red Apron you can order delicious fresh seafood options that are delivered same day to make sure nothing is, uh, fishy. (laughs) 
Sign up for Red Apron today. There's more to it than you realize. And you've never met this girl before. She's not an ex from college or something. Beanie, I've lived in L.A. for almost two decades now. She's in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Not a great crossroads for just bumping into each other at the store, you know? And you've been my lawyer for over half that time. I haven't been your lawyer for years, right? We don't even have to manage your right? The rest of the conversation between Beanie involved my finances, and although I share quite a bit with you, I don't feel guilty for keeping this part to myself. Beanie was my legal representation when I first won Subsister and got the million dollars, but I never ended up needing him. Until now. Ray, we need to talk about you. What do you mean? That version of me on the recordings? Yeah, I want to know about me as well. No, I mean you, you. Step away from the subsister stuff just for a moment. How are you? <laughs> the only answer I can come up with is... I can't step away from subsister. Which probably means I'm not good, huh? <sighs> you know, there's a lot to listen to and, like, edit, all that. A lot of pizza boxes and take up behind you, Ray. When was the last time you cleaned up? Oh, it's not that it's not that bad. It's not that bad, really. Uh, really, there's just trash in this area, like where you can see on the Zoom call in, in my recording studio. The rest of the apartment doesn't look like this. I, I mean, it doesn't look like this. Your recording studio? Don't you live in a one-room apartment? Ray, when was the last time you had a normal conversation? Just listened to someone and thought about what they said. Hell. When was the last time you stopped and really listened to yourself? Listen to myself. Beanie, that's it. You're a genius. I know, but don't try to get out of this. I care about you, and that's why we have to have this hard talk. Beanie, I swear, I no, I promise we'll talk more, but I gotta go. I think I figured this out. Beanie made me think about it. We need to listen to myself. You think I don't listen to your voice enough as it is? No, Trisha. Think about the last couple of episodes we've got. The Valentine's Day episode, the New Year's episode. Did anything stick out on those? Uh, that Sonny was always a bit of a stick in the mud? No, 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 no. Remember how they started. To commemorate the New Year, I just wanted to give a shout-out. RTCR, HTDUB, SDOS, PBK. Thank you for joining us during this very special Valentine's Day episode. I know you secretly listen, and you know I don't have time for cues. G-N-K-Z-D, Z-J-O. That's code. What is that code? Oh, I can't make heads or tails of it. I've seen a few ciphers in my day, but it's um, mostly hunter-killer stuff. I, I have no idea what these letters are supposed to mean. Yeah, they're really random. Wait, do you have any friends that are into, like, puzzles? Um, yeah, I got a guy. Alright, well, as long as he's nicer than your physicist friend. Try not to pick a fight with everyone you meet. Hey, really, who's been calling you nonstop? It's nothing. Get your friend on the line. Let's figure out this code. I felt like every lead was coming up empty. Every path turns into a dead end. But I knew... That if we cracked this one, we'd figure out this whole thing. We went to college together. At UCLA. You never told me you went to UCLA. You never asked. I... And I'm not making a good first impression, am I, Orleans? <laughs> it's a wonder you ever even one subsister. Orleans, this is Ray. My thoughts return to Beanie. How I hadn't talked to someone in so long. Everything was about Subsister, and these podcasts now... I don't feel like the Ray that won Subsister ten years ago. All I have left are questions. Regrets. But if I walk away now... So, Orleans, you're the puzzle guy? I guess. 
He's being modest. Marlene said one of those speed Rubik's cubes to practice going faster, and he always won at Jenga. Well, I know who I'm calling next time I'm at the bar and they have that giant Jenga. Good at cup stacking too? Jenga isn't quite the same. It's about picking the dominant strategy and then judging the variables. <laughs> okay, forget Jenga. We've got a cipher for you. Brad, thank you for joining us during this very special Valentine's Day episode. I know you secretly listen, and I know I don't have any time for cues. GNKZD, CJO. Wait, isn't that... Don't you know the answer? You didn't tell him? It's a long story. Let's just say I don't remember. And then go listen to the podcast and give it a good review. Is there a cipher or, or code or whatever this reminds you of? I looked at Caesar Cipher and a substitution thing, but I can't figure any real words from it. Um, why don't you have any time for cues? Does that mean anything? Questions? Maybe I don't have any time for questions? Are you guys testing me? No, uh, Th- we... That's exactly it. Now, what do you think I meant by the cues comment? No time for cues. It could mean eliminating Q as a possibility from the replacement aspect of cracking the cipher. Okay, so whatever letters we're looking for, Q can't be part of it. Does that narrow it down, or is that just a part of it? I think. Let me just look this up real quick. Just saying, we could have googled ciphers too. Except you don't know what to type. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah, I think I know what this is, and it's an easy solve once you have part of the key. And we have the key? It's the queue. Not having the queue is the key. Right. We're looking at a Playfair cipher. Like Jimmy Playfair from season seven? No? <laughs> Ignore him. What's a Playfair cipher? Well, you have to create a 25 letter grid, five by five. So, first row should be A, B, C, D, and E down the line horizontally. Except the alphabet has 26 letters. Right. So, you have to remove one. The queue? So. Now we have 25 letters that are in play. We have a couple of rules to a Playfair cipher. The first is that this needs to be solved in pairs of letters. So if we needed to crack the letters T-E-S-T, that's four letters, two pairs. You start by solving T and E, then S and T. You need pairs of letters. Code is eight letters. Perfect. The next step is solving each pair. Let's think about a pair of letters. There are one of three things that can be true of each pair. Number one, they are in the same row. Number two, they are in the same column. Number three, neither. And if this is the case, you need to create a box around the letters with your two chosen letters as the corners opposing each other diagonally. We just do one of those things? Right. If it's in the same row or column, you can't create a box with the letters in opposing corners diagonally. Seems simple. It is if you know what these ciphers are. Back in the day, imagine intercepting a letter with the most random string of letters. If there are repeat letters, then we start introducing X's into the mix, and everything gets a lot harder. But let's just wait on that. We might not need to do that. All right, let's get the first pair of letters going. Uh, G, N. Uh, Orleans. No, it's your puzzle, man. I want to see you complete it. There's something cool about seeing it unlock in someone else's eyes. Isn't that what he says in the Saw movies or something? Just do it. Okay. All right. G and N are I and L. Uh, K and Z? That's O and V. Oh, I think it's... Wait, wait. So D and Z are E and Y. It's a Valentine's Day episode. And J and O are O and U. I love you. Huh. Congrats, you solved your first Playfair. Ray, are you okay? What are we doing for off-season content? Another Brant Steel? I think... We're going to do something new this summer. Oh, God. Last time we tried to do something new, I ended up getting a bowl of soup tattooed on my calf. (laughs) 
Oh, we need a new theme song. We've had the previous one for too long. I told you, I don't have anything. Well, you're going to have some time this summer, some free time. I don't get a lot of free time with this show, Ray. Exactly, we're going to have to take a break this summer. What? Is Mal pregnant or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. I'm just, uh, I'm going to have to leave for a couple of months. Family vacation. That's a weird time to go on vacation. Oh, shit. Whoa, hey, 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 we're going to lose our sponsorship with Green Apron if you talk like that. Come on. You're going on Subsister. This summer is when season 36 would be shooting. Timeline fits. No, 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 no. Just a vacation, okay? Of course. You'd have to deny it. It's part of your contract. You couldn't say yes, but I know you, Ray. I know when you're lying, and you're going back on Subsister. <laughs> Look, spend some time on your music. You'll still be getting half the returns on the show. Paid time off. Make us a killer theme song. Mal, you're letting this crazy bastard go? It's going to be weird imagining us apart. Oh, Mal. No, we're not going to be apart. We're both going on vacation, right? Uh, let's, let's cue that music. Let's get the music going. Uh, that's the end of the episode. Life before Mal. Remember your first day of second grade at a new school and you don't recognize anyone and everything is scary? Then, by the end of the year, you have tons of best friends and the memory of that first day seems so funny now. Yeah, you get what I'm talking about. Imagine that, except in reverse. Walking in with a best friend and walking back out alone. I've done what I can to bury Mal in my memories along with anything else that might distract me from finding the truth. When you're on the island playing subsister, you have to learn to compartmentalize. To lock away everything that will take your mind off the game. I feel like I never got out of that headspace. It's probably the reason why Mal and I... Uh, ended things. It's also the reason that I subsisted. That I won. Hey, Mal. Ray, what is going on with you? I've been calling you for the past month. I haven't been looking at my phone much lately. Well, not like it's been easy to reach you the past couple of years anyway. I was, um... I was working. I was working on something. You don't have to make up excuses. I listen to the podcast you're working on. Yeah. Kind of different than the old ones, huh? Please tell me this is some kind of, like, performance art thing or story. No, it's real. It's, it's in the title. Ray, what have you gotten into? Every part of me wanted to give her a smart-ass response, to throw her compassion right back in her face, to prove that I didn't need her anymore. But I just couldn't do it. There's a part of me that resents her. But there's an even bigger part of me that'll never stop loving Mallory. No matter what happens. Ray, what have you gotten into? I don't know. But it's scary. The <laughs> first time, I don't know, I'm actually scared here. You need to call the police. <laughs> and say what? That there are mysterious podcast episodes showing up on my hard drive? To laugh me right out of the room. Someone threatened you. That one recording of you? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. 
There's just no sane way to present this to someone, though. Have you, you know, gotten a medical opinion? Have I checked to see if I'm crazy? I did check the carbon monoxide alarm. No, I'm not saying you're crazy. It's just your behavior. My behavior? What are you talking about? Beanie said you're having a hard time again. Oh my god, I'm not destroying myself. I'm not some alcoholic or into drugs or parties. I didn't do that when, you know, everything happened between us either, okay? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. I'm stressed. This whole thing is just taking up all my time and I'm, I was figuring out a work-life balance before this. Right, I'm not trying to use this to comment on our relationship or make a judgment on you. Does that sound like me? No. I care about you. And we can't be together anymore, but that doesn't mean I, I can erase everything I ever felt. I still want you to be okay. Ray? I'm okay, Mal. <laughs> Don't go into your sub-sister mode where you ignore everything and focus on your work. No, really, I'm good, thanks. Ray, for once, just let sub-sister go. You never needed it. I can't this time, okay? Just this time, though. Once this one's over, I'm done with Subsister. <laughs> That's a good thing. But I've heard those words before. The winning didn't improve you to me. I loved you before you ever won anything. But did I love me? The extremity of the situation may be new to Mal, but the feelings of me overwhelming myself and Mal being left at the wreckage are... old. Before I played Subsister, I was obsessed with Subsister. I watched every episode, frontwards, backwards, out of order. I studied the edits, I studied the character arcs, the music, the post-game interviews. I read books, every Sonya Orbison article, all the theories. I even wrote a bunch of them. It was all about Subsister. Every second, every minute. I had met Mal in college. I was working for an accountant back then. I did bookkeeping on an auto repair place. She was a legal aid for the owner's lawyer. We met across a room. It wasn't love at first sight or anything. We just talked in the parking lot. But those minutes we talked turned into a decade. My love for Subsister always felt like this awkward thing in between us. Like in older cars when someone rides in that middle seat up front, it just feels like something jammed in there that isn't supposed to be. And now at the end of it, I think about regret. You know, did I spend too much time fixated on a reality show? Did I care more about people on the internet? People who would eventually become my fans. Did I care more about them than I did my own wife? And what do I have to show for it? Not much of a life. <laughs> Not much of a winner either. I'm starting to wonder what's the point of subsisting if it means you can't be happy. Let's just solve this next one. You really should answer that, or block them, at least. I'm gonna call them back, tell them what they want to hear so she leaves me alone. She? Are you talking about me? Orleans, you beautiful genius. Let's solve that next one. I gave you two the tool to solve it. It's up to you now. What's the second code? Trisha? R-T-C-R-H-T-D-U-B space... S-D-O-S-P-B-K. Okay, so let's start with R-T. 
uh, S and U. C R is B S. So this word is subsister. The first word is subsister. Winner, maybe subsister winner. That's who I'd be thanking, though. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so what's B S? R completes the end of subsister, and the next letter is C. D O comes out to E N. C E N. Uh, next group of letters gives us T R, then A L. C E N T R A L. Subsister Central? What is that? I, I don't know, Ray? It's a website. It was never a huge website. It was run by one guy or something. That's who you're thinking? Who is Subsister Central? I don't know. It's a fan site back in the old days of Subsister, you know, when it was really big. I, you remember when it premiered after the Super Bowl. Those days? Dude, I was like one. The bigger question is, why does this you, the you on the fake podcast, know this code and you didn't? I swear I've never... Now hold on a second. Have you seen it before? You know what? I think I have. When I played Subsister, the way production would give you information was through a mailbox called Sale Mail. A giant mast planted in the ground with a mailbox. They used to put letters with clues to what our challenge would be in there. On the Dominican Republic season, they actually hid a clue to an invulnerability artifact in a letter we received through sale mail. I remember seeing random letters scattered at the bottom, but I didn't solve it. Carlos solved it. He went and found the artifact, but he never ended up using it. I didn't even know he had it until after the season when I was watching it on TV like everyone else. It seems this other you, the one that didn't win Subsister knows a Playfair cipher. Maybe he he got the artifact. Trisha, check out Subsister Central. I don't even know if this site still exists, but we gotta look into it. Wait, is this all pretend or part of a story or something? I'm so confused. It's for the podcast, big guy. We're just trying to keep things entertaining. You get it. No, I really don't. Trisha, anything? I don't know. It's just like any other subsister website. Talking about season 34 and the cancellation and stuff. Seems totally normal. Another dead end. Maybe I should talk to Carlos and figure out how he solved the Playfair cipher. Yeah, this is just useless stuff. I don't see what could be useful. I guess we need to talk to the creator. Why bother? For all we know, Subsister Central might be the biggest website for Subsister in the other Ray's world. I'm so sick of this. Trisha, keep looking. I gotta take this. Orleans, thanks for everything. What did we even do? I ask myself that every day. I ended my session with Trisha and Orleans to call Mal. That's what you heard before. And afterwards, I didn't feel right. I felt drained. Empty. Emptier than usual. I don't know what happened to me or when I changed. I used to be nicer, happier. I won some sister because people liked me and trusted me. And now? I don't even like being around me. I wasn't going to stop looking into this, but after talking to Mallory, I really wish I could. I won a million dollars, but how come it feels like I lost everything? Hey, Trisha, thanks for calling back, but uh, I think I'm going to take a break for tonight. I just don't have it in me. Here we go again, Ray. Every time I think we're out of rope, someone lengthens the noose. Wait, what is it? Do you know the creator of Subsister Central? His name is Clarence Height. He wrote everything. Oh, yeah, I remember Clarence now. Yeah, he was all right. I liked some of his stuff, but, he, you know, he was kind of, uh... Weird? <laughs> yeah, for lack of a better term. I can't remember why I thought that, though. Probably because he writes fan fiction about Subsister. Oh, that's right. He used to create his own seasons and write out these elaborate superstar seasons with returning players. I actually liked some of his writing, but uh, I wasn't about to spend time reading fan fiction. Well, you really should have. Oh, no. Why? Let me read you his version of the season Dominican Republic, the one he wrote after the season aired. After? Why would you write a fanfic 
after the season ended. At that point, everybody knows how it's going to go. Ray leaned forward. He could feel the fire in the center of Island Judgment on his face. He knew that he needed to survive this vote to make it to Terminal Judgment. But Carlos and Leah would be fools to let him go. They both knew that he would win. And when Ray couldn't win the invulnerability necklace at the Terminal Challenge, they knew that Ray couldn't stay. The decision had come down to Leah since she had won. Curtis Lowe trudged to the podium with the clay pot that contained the ballot. What would it say? Carlos or Ray? Ray had played the better game. Carlos was a likable underdog, though. Leo would do well to eliminate either one. Who would subsist? Curtis Lowe opened the ballot and read. His grim face betrayed nothing. He looked up and flipped the ballot. Ray. Ray groaned in agony. He had been so close, and now he'd be joining the Shadow Council on Day 38 to choose the ultimate subsister. Ray brought his torch forward. Curtis lowered his extinguisher to eliminate the flame. Ray had been voted out of subsister. He had played such a good game that he'd likely never win because he'd be voted out immediately if he were to return. He was too dangerous. He could sway minds with his words, change their thoughts, and they wouldn't even realize. But we wouldn't see Ray again until season 36. When was this written? December 2011, more than a year after you won. But a decade before we found that recording of Sonny figuring out I, uh, Ray, plays in season 36. There's no way they can be connected though, right? Let's give Clarence a call. Subsister, a real podcast, will return in two weeks. Continue the investigation on Patreon with exclusive bonus episodes and more. Links in the show notes.